So it's Tuesday and somehow Tuesdays have become my um, run errands kind of day, um, get out and about. Um, and I've also started incorporating a little thrifting on Tuesdays because that's just kind of a nice little treat. And some of the errands that I run go right past one of, one of my favorite thrift stores. So um, I've got a couple of friends who have said, well, we love to see what you find at thrift stores or when you go to estate sales. Um, we love hearing about it and seeing what you found. It's just kind of neat to kind of see what's out there and the kind of things that I look for. So today I went to the thrift store and I thought that um, what I was looking for was a, a small centerpiece to put on my kitchen table, just in the breakfast area uh, for Thanksgiving or just fall or something that I leave out. I'm not much of a Halloween decorator at all. It's just not my thing. Um, so I like to do fall decorations and usually I lean more towards Thanksgiving. But I found at the thrift store this cute little turkey basket. <laughs> Um, and I thought it was, wasn't much at first. And in fact, the previous owner had left all of her little belongings. Some, she had some acorns, um, sweet gum balls, cinnamon sticks, um, different little rocks and tiny little pine cones, which I thought were sweet. Um, but it's just chock full, especially acorns, pretty neat. But my plan is to probably, um, actually I'll go ahead and do it. I'm gonna dump all of that out. I don't know. Me. Oh gosh, there's even a little dried walnut in that basket. Um, but I love that about thrift stores and estate sales. You you get a little glimpse into previous owners, um, what they might have done with something. But I thought this little tur turkey basket has even got little feet <laughs> and a tail. But what I thought I would do is I've got this little plant that I've had forever. And I don't particularly like the pot it's in. But I think I'm going to put a little plastic in my basket and put my plant in there and put this at the table. That's cute. It's really cute. So that's kind of what I intended. Either that one or possibly this plant. This one might look a little bushier, a little fuller, but I do like the pot it's in. This is a plant that my daughter gave me when I went to see her this past weekend. That might look nice in the turkey, but it kind of looks pretty in that green pot. So I'll probably leave that one there. Anyway, so that was the first find. I'm already thrilled with that. Um, the other thing I found was this crossbody bag. I'm kind of into smaller bags these days. Um, I'm not carrying much around. I'm, I'm not going to school every day, so I don't really need a lot with me. So I found this crossbody bag. I thought it was really cute for the fall. It's 100% wool. It's got a nice long strap to go crossbody. It's got an inside pocket, and it's also got the neatest little zipper pocket on the outside. Um, so somewhere to kind of hide maybe some money or your cards or a driver's license. Just enough to hold, you know, if you go into events, they now everything has to be small bags or clear bags, and this is the perfect size. So I thought that was a great find for $4. Just love that it's wool and it feels so good. Um, the other thing I found, and I always love to go to the section of used books. That's where I buy all of my books. I don't really see any sense in buying new books unless there's one on the shelf that's, you know, brand new that nobody really has and the only way to get it is new. But I found a couple of really good gems today. This one, you will only know this name if you're my age or older. I, this is a lady, Celi Celeste, Celestine Sibley. Um, Celestine Sibley was a columnist for the Atlanta Journal-Constitution for years, um, I believe in the 80s. And she passed away in 1999. But this is, it's called a granddaughter's reminiscence. Um, and the granddaughter was named after her. So this is her writing of her memory of her grandmother. She spent tons of time with her grandmother um, in her little cabin that actually is in Roswell, Georgia. That's where she lived for a while. Um, and that's where they spent a lot of their time. It's got some letters in here that she wrote to her grandmother and then her grandmother wrote back to her. It's got some great pictures of the cabin. It's got pictures of them growing up and being outside and just the joys that they found spending time with their grandmother, whether it was gardening, um, playing outside with sticks and acorns and um, out by the stream. So I'm so looking forward to this. It's just her retelling of her time with her grandmother. So sweet. And it tells a lot about Georgia, which is where I am. So a lot of this is very familiar. 
but I'm sure that a lot of you remember her. She was an incredible writer, so really it will be pretty inspirational, I think. The other one, um, as I was leaving, they've always got this little rack that's like their brand new books that they've just gotten in. They're all used, of course, um, but this one caught my eye. It's uh, Malcolm Gladwell. Some of you probably know him from uh, being the author of Outliers. That's his more popular book. But this one was called Talking to Strangers. Um, let me just read you this little caption on the inside. It just really um, interests me. It says, sometimes the best conversations between strangers allow the stranger to remain a stranger. Um, and then on the back, it says something about um, a book examining the ways we misinterpret or fail to communicate with one another could not feel more necessary. So it's kind of a neat, I'm really interested in that because I'm, I'm real interested in how people are communicating these days or how they're not communicating. I feel like there's been a lot of isolation in our world just recently and over the past two years for all obvious reasons. But um, anyway, I'm interested to read what he has to say about finding out about strangers. You know, how can you have a conversation with a stranger without maybe, um, without in going into something that they don't want to talk about? How do we do that? And how do we get to know one another and also expose one another um, to something new? So I'll, I'll let you know about this one. It'll be a little bit. I think I'm going to read this one first. I started this one this morning. I stopped and grabbed a cup of coffee and started this one. And I mean, I've read about 10 pages and it just brought me to tears. It, it's sweet because I loved my grandmother dearly and um, her birthday just passed. So some of the stuff she has already said in this book just reminded me of my grandmother. So there's that. And then I also found this, um, The New Gardener. This is, it's, it sounds like a book for someone who's never gardened and it could be, but it is a great book all about like trouble areas in your garden, tools that you should use and how to use them, what they're good for, when to plant certain things, um, deadheading, um, getting seeds out of flowers, um, climbers, building a patio. Really a neat book, but I really love the illustrations in it, the how-tos, and it's hardback. I love a good coffee table book. So this is gonna be a, a nice joy to sit and just thumb through just for five minutes of reading at a time. So anyway, so I got these three books, got my cute turkey ready for my centerpiece, um, as well as this wool crossbody bag. That's really all I bought, but you know what? I only spent $12 today, and that was a lot of fun as well. So I've got some real gems here. So anyway, that's what I did. That was at one thrift store. I just spend a lot of time. I've I love to kind of get to know the people that work at these thrift stores and spend some time talking to them. They're usually pretty insightful about maybe where some things came from or when they'll be getting new things in. So anyway, get out there, do a little thrifting. There's nothing wrong with buying used. In fact, you can be assured that everything you're buying, there's a story behind it. And you may not know that story, but how cool is it to know that um, something small that you purchased used to be something that someone else loved. And I just, I just enjoy that. So anyway, those are my findings today and I hope you get out there and enjoy some time thrifting and maybe go to an estate sale this weekend. I think that's what might be what I do. There's a couple of good ones down the way. So anyway, that's about it for today.